God, stamp eternity on my eyeballs. But you know, if God should stamp eternity or even judgment on our eyeballs, or if you like, on the fleshy table of our hearts, I'm quite convinced we'd be a very, very different tribe of people, God's people in the world today. We live too much in time, we're too earthbound. We see as other men see, we think as other men think. We invest our time as the world invests it, we invest our money. We're supposed to be a different breed of people. I believe that the church of Jesus Christ needs a new revelation of the majesty of God. They're all going to stand one day. Can you imagine it? At the judgment seat of Christ to give an account for the deeds done in the body. This is what? This is the King of Kings. And he's the judge of judges. And it's the tribunal of tribunals. And there's no court of appeal after it. The verdict is final. Listen, when you see Jesus, you're not going up and say, Hey, buddy, I'm glad you died for me. When you see Jesus, you'll be almost paralyzed with fear unless you had a glorified body and a glorified mind. You say, Well, Mr. Raynor, I, I won't be in serious trouble because, you know, I don't have a good memory. Well, I'll tell you what, you'll have one that day. In Malachi, it says that God has a book of remembrance. And I think it would do you good before you go to bed every night this week to ask God, what did you put in your book this, this, today from my life? Did you get up this morning and thank God you were pure? Huh? Did you thank him that that devilish fever you used to have for, for sniffing cocaine or drugs or something, that he broke the fetter of it? Are you really glad you're not a prostitute now? You're going to be a part of the bride of the Lamb? Are you glad he's removed from your heart covetousness and bad temper and all those creepy, horrible things that used to master you? I think sometimes we think we're going to march up and say, well, you know, Jesus, do you know how many years I served you and how many souls I won for you and how many sermons I preached for you? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, what will he be like in heaven? Well, I'll tell you what the book says he'll be like. It says his hair is as white as snow. His feet are like burnished brass. His face is like the sun in its strength. His eyes are living coals of fire. His tongue is a sharp two-edged sword. And here is John, who used to lean his head on the bosom of Jesus and hear that divine heartbeat. The man that I believe knew more about Jesus than anyone else. And when he saw Jesus there on his throne in his majesty, with his face brighter than the sun, with his feet like burnished brass, with his eyes like flames of fire, with his tongue majestic and, light, and his voice like the sound of many waters. John, the man who had walked with him and talked with him for three years, says that when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. What do you think you and I are going to do? We must stand at the judgment seat of Christ. You can't send your lawyer. You can't send a representative. You can't send a, send a preacher who says, well, I understand this, uh, this person who's always falling up and down and in and out and you didn't know where they were. I, 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 I'll explain it to you. And the Lord says, you won't do anything of the kind. You say, I, well, I, I'm not quite sure about this. You know, my, 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 no, your memory isn't faulty. Everything you've done, every idle word you've spoken, every action, the things that I missed, we're not going to be judged just because of what we've done. We're going to be judged for why we did it. Not for the action, for the motive. What motivated your giving? So you, you'd have a plaque with your name on? Or you'd be at the top of the list for giving money? Why, why? Why? What's the motive behind it? God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. The secret archives of our hearts and lives are going to pass before. You say, well, I came this morning, my wife wanted me to come. But I don't think I'll come again. I don't like this kind of stuff. Well, friend, let me tell you lovingly, go to hell and live with all the scum of the earth. You like to drink, go with the drinkers. You like to lust, go with the prostitutes. In hell, if you're given to lust after women, you'll have that lust, but there's nothing to satisfy your lust. If you drink, you'll thirst, but there's nothing to satisfy your thirst. You'll give a king's ransom for one drop of water. There isn't even a drop of water, never mind that precious wine you drink. Can God forgive every sin I've ever committed? I said, he sure can. That is, if you repent of your sin and you plead for the blood of Christ and you ask for mercy, 
that tender Christ who went about doing good and he kissed little babies and blessed people. Now, ah, there's no, nothing more beautiful than a little lamb. There's nothing more terrible than the wrath of the lamb. And I think we'd better watch this business of, you know, God loves you, God loves you, and all the bumper sticker sloppy evangelism. Will you remind people of the goodness and the severity of God? Will you remind them that there's a day when mercy is cut off forever? Will you remind them that people pray in hell but nobody ever answers? He doesn't just take your sins, he takes yourself. He takes the government of your life. And it's not only true that we live in a world of bankrupt politics, we live in a world, and this is the most tragic of all, of a bankrupt church. When in God's name is the church going to open her heart again and open her mind again and see again. Can you imagine when God takes hold of history and empties it? The dead, small and great, are going to stand before God in that awesome day. I preach out of my heart all I believe and I die for it. But say, am I just a showman? What's my, what's my secret life like? The most shattering thought I've ever had is my personal accountability to God one day. For God has not merely given us Jesus Christ, he's given us all things. And because there isn't enough joy in the house of God, we need entertainment. Because entertainment is the devil's substitute for joy. I think before we point the finger at the world, we better turn to the church and say, look, we better all get sackcloth and ashes and humble ourselves and say, Almighty God, when I see the church in the New Testament, they didn't have stately buildings. They didn't have paid evangelists. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have organization. They did, couldn't get on TV and beg. But I'll tell you what they did. They turned the world upside down. And I'm embarrassed to be part of the church of Jesus today because I believe it's an embarrassment to a holy God. Most of our joy is clapping our hands and having a good time and then afterwards we're talking all the dribble of the world. Oh, to be lost in him, to be consumed in him. Won't it be wonderful and say, see, those are the men who walk with Jesus. See, there's Paul. He gave his colossal intellect to God. He wrote about 14 epistles. He went over Asia Minor. He didn't sit in a jet and say, you know, how good the Lord is to me. And I, no siree. He was lashed to the post 195 times. He was in weariness and fastings and painfulness and tribulation and distress and famine and peril and nakedness and sword. In tribulation amongst false brethren. In perils of the deep. Do you think that man's going to get two ounces of reward for a life like that? Grace is free, but rewards are not free. People say you're talking about works. Sure I am, because God did. Jesus did. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? If a man has to be cast away from God with his own sin and misery forever and ever, do you get so near to the heart of God that you share his grief over a world and over a backslidden church that we have today? Can he share his sorrow with you? Oh yes, you'll get filled with the Holy Ghost and get the bank balance, that's all right. If you do, God will hold you to account for it. But are you big enough to say, Lord, in this crucial hour in human history, let me fill up the sufferings of Christ. Because if you're going to get mature in God, all the dwarfs around you will criticize and sneer at you. And say so you're trying to be holier than the rest of us, huh? You'll discover this, the men who have been most heroic for God have been the men with the greatest devotional life. The only thing that will tie me in victory continually through the blood of Christ is my personal devotion to Him, the Son of God. My adoration that I give Him my tribute every day. It's more than my service. It's more than giving my money. That I love Him and I adore Him and I magnify Him. I, I take Him as it were by the feet. The one thing that's wrong with that world outside is it thinks it's done with Jesus Christ. It hasn't even started with Him yet. You know why the world is poor and sick outside? Because we really don't know how to pray, that's why. I've said it many times, I say it again this morning, that no man is greater than his prayer life. Let me live with a man a while and share his prayer life and I'll, I'll tell you how tall I think he is or how majestic I think he is in God. It's going to be an awesome day. You see, there's no possible, there's no possibility of any rehearsal. 
and what? There's no possibility of any repetition because again, this is the final judgment. I think again of a statement Dr. Tozer made to me once. He said, Len, you know what? He said, we'll hardly get our feet out of time into eternity and gaze on eternity if what we bow our heads in shame and humiliation and say, my God, look at all the riches there were in Jesus Christ and I've come to the judgment seat almost a pauper. Master, forgive and inspire us anew. Banish our worldliness. Help us to ever live with eternity's values in view. Said that great man who birthed that revival, God, stamp eternity on my eyeballs. You know, if we can't live as a different breed of people on this earth, we have no right to live here. We ought to live every day as though we come out of another world into this world with the power of that world upon us. To live and speak and move and have our being in Jesus Christ. And if we get back to a people who are really baptized with obedience, submissive to the total will of God, not concerned about human opinion, not asking for more to spend prodigally on ourselves, but say, oh God, I want these, this life of mine adjusting so I, when I stand in your awesome presence, as James says, we shall not be ashamed at his appearing.